A teenage riot ends with nine middle schoolers expelled. Why this mom says, don't rush to judgment. Kids make bad decisions um, and hopefully they learn from this. The Portland woman's dream vacation turns into a nightmare. Her mouth was foaming. Um, her face was really contorted. Why doctors still aren't sure why she had to go from a beach to a hospital bed. Should campus police be disarmed? An Oregon bill aims to do just that. And we want you to let us know at kgw.com slash vote whether you think that's a good idea. Tonight on KGW News at 6. But first, they are making finally some progress here. There's still a ton, so much work to do right now. Uh, city crews do think they may have an idea of how, what caused this massive water main to break on Northeast Skidmore. Thanks for being with us. I'm Dan Haggerty. And I'm Laurel Porter. The 30-inch pipe that broke on Saturday, letting loose a geyser of water, has now been replaced. It was more than 100 years old. KGW's Pat Doris learned age might not have been the only factor here. We'll get to Pat in just a moment. We'll start with KGW's Morgan Romero live in Northeast Portland and Morgan you talked to neighbors and business owners affected by this mess. The streets are dry now thick dust settled in the place of flowing water. Crews are not out on scene anymore. They hauled off the burst pipe earlier, but they have a lot of work to do. As you said, it still could be one to two weeks before Skidmore is totally reopened. This was the scene in Northeast Portland Saturday afternoon. I got to the door. I said, what is that roaring no noise? And so I came out and it's just, it's one of those shocking, unbelievable because it was like a geyser up there that changed to a waterfall. Margaret Kennedy's landscape submerged under a couple feet of water. I could have only come out to that first bush without getting into the water. It was pumping a million gallons a minute, they said. That's, you're, you're screwed. Down the street on Alberta. It looked like a river. The Saturday rush, interrupted by rushing water. And we lost business because um, closing at the busiest time during on a Saturday afternoon um, is really hard for small businesses because especially mom and pop shops like this. Businesses helped one another as neighbors near the burst did the same. We just had 10 or 15 people in there that were scooping water towards the drain. And rushing sandbags around. We were all out, we were all together. It was somewhat of a block party. While they're grateful for the round the clock effort to fix the break, we found mixed takes on the city's communication during this mess. I, I don't know that the city got a great grade in this process. I feel like the lack of communication on the city's part was really shameful in that it, it made us have a lot more stress than we needed. The Water Bureau says crews and outreach staff were on scene ASAP, posting on social media and holding a press conference. Their primary responsibility was getting the water turned off and main fixed, but they say they were available to answer questions. This is a nuisance and it's too bad it happened, you know, the water and all that, but the city's been over backwards to try to get it done, get it done quickly. Now the dust has settled. Restoration crews were out helping homeowners whose basements and garages flooded. It was two and a half feet high. Alongside neighbors. Their basement's destroyed. The furnace is done, the appliances are done. You know, the, they've got to throw away their couch and all the living room furniture that was down there. City officials say homeowners and businesses should reach out to their insurance providers to see if this is covered. Any damage claims filed with the city are going to be reviewed on a case by case basis, and they're still trying to determine if they're quote liable. Back mm. to you. What a punch to the gut to some of the people who live in that area. So unexpected, and as the video shows, can be so damaging. Morgan, thank you. We want to get now to KGW's Pat Doris. He's looking into the city's response to all of this. Pat, with all the pipes under the ground here, uh, these breaks do happen a little more often than people think. Right, it happens basically every other day. There are miles and miles of pipes under our city streets. The farther out of downtown that you live, the newer your pipes are. But here, the city is saying age was only one small factor. Portland has a lot of older pipes in the ground, which is not always a bad thing. The pipe that broke in northeast Portland was 104 years old, and the city says it was in very good condition. So what happened? And this is. This breaks exactly right next to where a recent construction project happened, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's anybody's fault or not. Mm -hmm. It just means that it, it took a stable situation 
they had to excavate to get around it and that can contribute to uh, main breaks in addition to age, in addition to soil conditions. The city does not think age played a big role here. They're pointing instead to a disturbance of the soil and then the machines that stamp the soil firmly back into place. In general, it doesn't like to be destabilized and then compaction happens after they put the street back and they're then pressing down on top of it, adding a little bit of more uh, pressure to it. Portland has more than 2,200 miles of water pipes under its streets. Something breaks on average every other day. The East Portland News shared these pictures from a major break in late February on Southeast 82nd, not far from Foster. And it also linked to another break not far away three years earlier. And back in 2013, West Burnside became a river for a while as a major water pipe broke there and spread rocks over the road. But there is good news here. The pipe that broke on Skidmore is apparently aging nicely. What we can see here suggests to us that this run of Maine is probably in really good condition all the way through its uh, course from uh, down towards Kelly Butte all the way to Vernon Tanks. So we feel uh, confident even though we've had a big main break event here in the last couple of days. By the way, I asked Ty there from the city, who was it who was doing that construction next to your pipe? He said he didn't know. I'm sure someone at the city does by now. Back to you. I bet they do. Thank you, Pat. Now to a medical mystery. A dream vacation in Mexico ends with a Portland woman in the hospital with seizures and memory loss. It sounds scary. Let's bring in KGW investigative reporter Kyla Boshi, who has been looking into this case for us, Kyle. Well, she's better now, which is good news, although doctors admit they're baffled. They don't know what caused this condition. Test results came up clean. But the case does share some similarities with other reports when dozens of tourists complain of injuries and illness after drinking what appeared to be tainted alcohol at resort towns in Mexico. This was the downstairs. It was all open. Angela Glass has photos of her trip to Mexico, but very few memories. It's a blur. The memories themselves from that week are pretty much gone. Um, a few weeks before are fuzzy and definitely the few weeks after. The Portland woman ended up in the hospital after suffering seizures, memory loss, and disorientation during her vacation. Doctors still aren't sure what happened. She had no pre-existing conditions. It's baffling. I mean, now I've pieced together that I, <laughs> everything that happened, and it's still, there's no answer. With no real memory, Angela had to rely on her friend, Stacia Secretariat, to fill in the blanks about their trip last November. The two women celebrated their birthdays with a stay in the resort town of Sayulita on Mexico's Pacific coast. It was incredible. Everyone was really nice. It was beautiful. It was stunning. But on the fifth day, something happened. Angela suddenly became disoriented, then had a seizure, something she'd never experienced before. Her mouth was foaming. Um, her face was really contorted. Um, her eyes were really red and like rolling back. I mean, she just wasn't there. Paramedics were called to the resort, and shortly after, she had another seizure before regaining consciousness. Kicking and violently trying to get away from her. I mean, clearly just not present. And then she stopped that all of a sudden, and they were like, hey, how are you? And they're trying to take her blood pressure, and she's like, great, how are you? Angela would spend three days hospitalized in Mexico before being stabilized and flown to the U.S. Once back home, she was admitted to Providence Portland Medical Center, where doctors treated her for another five days. Medical records show Angela underwent a series of tests, including a CAT scan, MRI, spinal fluid, and toxicology. But doctors found nothing abnormal. I'll never know. Doctors admit it's a medical mystery, although many of Angela's symptoms match those of other reports last year, when dozens of tourists complained of injuries and illness after drinking what appeared to be tainted alcohol at resort towns in Mexico. Now authorities there have seized 10,000 gallons of tainted alcohol from a supplier. There's no memory of it happening. Like no one knows what happened. They just lose hours or they lose days, which is exactly what happened to you. Angela and her friend Stacia don't know if there was foul play. It's not clear if Angela got tainted alcohol or was drugged. They just hope it doesn't happen to others. Shortly after problems with alcohol started surfacing at Mexican resorts in 2017, the U.S. State Department expressed concern and started tracking cases 
Last year, Mexican authorities confiscated thousands of gallons of illegal tequila. Officials say test results found some of that contaminated levels of methanol, sometimes found called wood alcohol, which is commonly used in windshield wiper fluid. Oh if you can my believe goodness. that. So it's really, un I mean, they don't know, but it's unclear they don't if she know. was yeah. poisoned, if she was drugged. We hear about this sort of stuff happening overseas in the States all the time, right? How, what can people do? Yeah, we do hear about this drugging, even in U.S. clubs and bars and things like that. Really best advice, don't drink alone, be in pairs or in groups, especially when traveling internationally. Um, and also, you know, if you ask for a beer, Get it in a can or a bottle that you can preferably open by yourself so yeah. you know exactly what you're getting. But Chilling. Yeah. What a story. Thank you, Kyle. And if you have a story idea for Kyle to investigate, give him a call at 503-226-5041. Or you can email callkyle at kgw.com. Hey, we want you to get ready to vote here because coming up, we're talking about a bill that's working its way through the legislation right now that would disarm police officers at two Oregon universities. We'll tell you what the police have to say about it and get your thoughts too. And swimming for dear life. Biologists race to save hundreds of sturgeon trapped in shallow water on Savi Island. How they got there and how they'll hopefully get out next. And we saw some very warm temperatures earlier this afternoon. Take a look at some of these numbers along the Orient Coast, Newport, almost 80 degrees. We didn't quite hit 70 in downtown Portland, but that could change by tomorrow afternoon. I'll have more on your sunny and warm conditions coming up after the break. And let's talk about this KGW Great Food Drive. You guys are doing amazing things in this community. We are trying now to collect one million and a half, well, a million and a half pounds of food by the end of the month. Uh, thanks for your help already. We've collected more than 1.2 million pounds. Uh, to help us hit our goal, you can buy Telemark products, donate food at local Toyota dealerships, or give cash at Rivermark or go to the KR website, kgw.com slash food drive. And if you'd rather donate in person, we'd love to see you. You'll have another chance this Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Cedar Mill Safeway. We hope to see you there.